today is Aura Deal and Denise Size. We're talking about the class system within the NCHA. The current system is, as everybody knows, complicated and not without its problems when it comes to things like uh, fairness um, in terms of being a competitor. And there's been a proposal put forward at the convention this year to look at that and see if it can be reborn so to speak and these guys have really come up with that proposal and we're going to be talking about that today so ladies how did this eventuate what was the um, impetus at the beginning you was talking about four years ago that this really came into being yes um, at the convention about four years ago um, uh, the frustration of people showing and not showing and who can and who can't um, the rules that are complicated and just you know uh, I don't even know where I'm supposed to show um, was very evident to all of us um, and I just suggested that you know why don't we try and find some kind of a level playing field that we can as divisions show um, and Denise spoke up and said, or I've done some research, um, I've got some numbers, let's get together. And basically that's how it has evolved, yeah. truthfully. Um, you know, just, we know that, you know, especially in the non-pro and maybe even in the, in the open, I would say, there are just, there's just so much. An ocean of difference. Oh, really. wow. I mean, it's. You know, you, you, you have one good horse that brings you to the top and then you may not have it for a while and then you just sit and you just kind of simmer and you don't, you just, you just lose total interest. So we were hoping that by leveling that not only could it bring horses that were not, you know, possibly able to mark a 218 every time, that those horses could still compete on a level with a rider at you know that that's a B or a C student you know so to speak um, and hopefully our 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 limited age um, proposal is is hopefully going to rectify some of this um, that's our that's our hope so explain on an individual level because you're a competitor and you were thinking uh, at one stage um, when this was all um, coming into being that as a competitor you what didn't want to bring your horse to certain shows because you just knew that you wouldn't have a chance or explain that yes thinking. basically um, you, you when you're when you're gifted to have a, an exceptional horse and you money out of a a um, on this horse and you have it for your three or four or five or six year old year and then you go three or four years and don't have that caliber of horse you are basically added money and you sit back and you kind of take back and the economy goes and the recession starts and all of those numbers and it just it, it, it all falls apart so hopefully what this leveling system will allow is I can enter in my say I'm an intermediate rider I can enter a horse that not necessarily has to mark what the non-pro top level has to mark but I can bring it as a B student and maybe me a B rider I can mark on my level but yet I might take a shot and enter up and I, I might be able to, you know, be able to be compensated for both sides of that. It gives me choices, which I don't presently have at the current structure. I now have a choice. I can choose how to play this game. And that's basically it in a nutshell. Okay, so let's go over to you, Denise. What was it that had got you looking at the numbers, at um, the, the earnings and thinking about what the research that was needed to be done and what you needed to look at? Well, I mean, like Aura said, people just did not feel like they had a level playing field. And when they felt that way, they just wouldn't compete, and so the entries were going down. So we just looked at the database and started coming up with... Um, 
looking at where how big the spread was in lifetime earnings in the various divisions and tried to figure out well if we made certain levels within those divisions would the player or the member then decide to enter like they used to um, so we we looked at that and uh, shared that with the competition committee the full competition committee and came up with the current three structure three levels within each division um, and it gives it, it gives a beginner rider in each division an opportunity to compete against their peers it gives that intermediate rider an opportunity to compete against their peers and if either one of those two levels feel like they could be competitive in a higher level they can enter and so it it gives them the option it doesn't force anybody into enter um, it just gives opportunity um, and with our current numbers we need to grow membership and we need to grow show entries and so this is an idea that hopefully will be successful at the cotton states I'm sure there's things that we're going to need to tweak but at least it'll give us an opportunity to try an idea. So basically the proposal doesn't actually change this class structure it creates levels within the structures exactly. Yes. Exactly. And, and what's the spread of each of those levels well within the well there's like I said there's three levels within each division and in the amateur you have uh, well in each division you have a limited an intermediate and then the top level for that division in the amateur the limited is zero to twenty five thousand in lifetime earnings the intermediate is twenty five to um, nine, ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine and then the top level in the amateur is anything over a hundred in your non pro it's zero to a hundred thousand for your limited it's a, a hundred thousand one dollar to forty four thousand nine hundred ninety nine um, well, let's see, 499999 up to the intermediate, and then anything over half a million is the top level in the non-pro. In the open, it's structured where it's zero to 200 in the limited open, uh, 200,001 to 749,999 is the intermediate, and then anything over 750,000 uh, 750, is the top level in the open. We, you know, we looked at previous shows. We took the top 10 regional shows that had already occurred last year, um, including the Triple Crown events, and we stratified those entries to see what the payouts would look like and what the size of the classes would be to make sure that the the dollar amount breaks that we proposed worked. And so there was some trial and error. Um, like I mentioned to you, there's a subcommittee um, under the cl under the competition committee, and we went through a ton of shows to to just challenge whether the payouts worked and whether the class size worked, and it did under this um, under the what we proposed for the cotton states. So you kind of I don't know use those past shows as a case. As a study. Case, they were our pilot studies, um, and like I said, we we did the 2017 Cotton States, and we did a, a lot of the major shows last year, including the Super Stakes and the Summer Spectacular, and um, and looked at payouts, and like I said, looked at the number of entries that would have been in a, in each level, and they all they all seem to work. So, will the entry fees change at all? Part of our proposal and, and part of an incentive to get people to enter more is that we, under our proposal, recommended a graduated entry uh, fee schedule, which means that your limited level is going to be cheaper to enter than your intermediate, which is going to be cheaper to enter than the top level in that division. In addition, if you choose to enter multiple levels, multiple classes, There'll be the show. We encourage the show producer to discount the entry fee so that it would be even more attractive to enter, let's say, the limited and the intermediate, or even all three of them at a at a discount um, to again generate more entries. The Cotton States followed our recommendation, and they've done just that in their entry forms. And how many holes would be paid out? For each well, level well it just depends it, it it's driven just like the current uh, payout structure is right now so the number of entries will drive how many holes that are paid in each in each level um, the cotton states I think are requiring 
25 horses in a level to have a working finals if not it's a pencil finals a lot of those same rules that the show producers had as far as the number of holes paid and whether it was a working or non-working finals is exactly under um under our proposal like it currently is and the i guess breakdown of payouts um the higher the level the higher yes the yes. higher the, the amount level. under under our proposal yes. under our proposal we recommended that the added money that a producer puts to a show needs to be concentrated at the top level because even though we're creating these levels the incentive is for people to ride up but we want to encourage them. We don't want to force them. And the way we encourage them is to is we recommend that the added money needs to be concentrated at the top with some in the intermediate. And at the discretion of the show producer, they could put some in the limited. But again, we don't want we don't want the limited rider to ride out of that class sooner than they're ready to compete in the intermediate so we don't want them to win a lot of money but we recognize that they have to win some so it's 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 uh it's up to the show producer at the limited levels for each division um our initial proposal we said don't put any in there but uh, again in the in the past the show producers have put money in those beginner classes so it's hard to not put at least some in there okay at the convention this was proposed how was it received very well um, the open riders want to to make sure that their purses are staying the same and what we have told them that at the present levels they are equal to or very close um, and those levels that are in the divisions could possibly change the very next year but we have to start somewhere we were trying to explain that the only way I can prove that it will work is to show you that this is a mirror of what you are presently receiving now there is there these are the numbers um, they could change hopefully they will change we as a subcommittee wanted diff different levels to pay more range so to speak but we could not maintain the payouts that these folks are are acceptable for so we had to start somewhere hopefully that will be the incentive to grow and maybe like you say, those those students that aren't playing this game and those horses that are being left at the barn instead of coming to town to play, hopefully they will show up. And if they do, these levels could go from three levels in a division to possibly five. I mean, it depends on the numbers and 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 who's to say. I mean, it's I, we don't have a crystal ball that says, here it is, this is what it's going to do. We only could mirror what we had to sell to you that this is feasible this will work because the unknown is is who is not coming to town to play yes and so yes. that's so it's kind of like you're not hearing you know, those voices yeah, yeah so absolutely. it's kind of like the pilot study showed us a worst case scenario this is who actually entered yes. and this is leveling those riders in these various divisions so, so it's nothing you know so all this is a worst case scenario if we get more people coming to play the purse is going to be bigger right. because we have more riders so it, and it was it was very I feel like it was very positively received at the convention uh, this this year made the third year that I've been to the NCHA convention and I have to tell you it was the first year where I came away with people were excited they were they're ready for some change they're ready they, they recognize that there are some things that need to be changed and the willingness to try to, things that are not the old way um, was it, it was cool to see that that actually people are excited about wanting to try something new so and I think that's a very important point that you raise that it's not just trying to fix it for those who are competing right now to make it fair no. it, it, there's a real problem of membership yes numbers and the loss that's occurred over the past few right. years. Um, and actually, talk about some of those numbers in the, over the 10 years. Uh, I think Denise is probably the better one at it. She, she's well, our analytics you know, here. We, we, um, 
we have lost um, about uh, six or seven thousand in membership over the past ten years. We yeah. we peaked out at over twenty thousand, and our membership number is um, a little over thirteen thousand. And it's and it's all due to the fact that um, people didn't feel like they had a place to play. Um, it got too com- it got too costly. Mm-hmm. Um, the schedule was such that the the classes were going on the weekend level so late into the day or into the night that they didn't want to stick around and play. So really the convention, I felt like people became aware of our problem. And they weren't just turning their head to it. They were like, yeah, guys, I get it. We, we have got to turn these trends around and let's sit down and let's brainstorm and come up with some ideas on how to do it. And that's why I feel like this LAE proposal was so well received is they were like, we, we hear you. We, we see the numbers. We've got to do something. Um, show entries uh, on the weekend side are down dramatically over the past 10 years. Um, over 60,000 show entries we've declined from 2017 to, to 2007. Um, so we've, we've, we've got to do something. And so um, the LAE is the first side of it. Um, the weekend is a, is a whole nother uh, issue that's got to we've got to come up with some better ideas to get our weekend cutter back in playing with us um, but it'll be interesting to see how the Cotton States turns out. Um, so this is a trial in in action in terms of the first show that it will be applied at. Um, if, it, if all goes well what will you deem a success? How, where's the gauge on that? Well certainly the number of entries um, will determine whether it's successful or not, um, and um, looking at whether the payouts were appro- were reasonable, and and the the competitors felt like that was the case, um, and is is the minimum payout going to be to try to cover entry fees? Is that what you're looking at, or it's not really part of the formula? Well, you know that's that's really the show producer. Mm-hmm. Um, business plan Um, what we've done is we've provided a concept of how we feel like class structure could generate more interest Um, they were the ones that made the decision on what the entry fee was going to be and what the class schedule was going to be and and what the added money was going to be so those are all going to decide what the profitability is or not of the cotton states so um, Certainly, that's important. Um, but whether or not this class structure actually increased entries and increased number of horses walking to the herd um, is going to be, to me, the telltale of whether this format is successful or not, um, and whether it needs to be applied or tried at other shows. And uh, and we've been asked, you know, is is you know other shows in the fall can they have they been approved to do this and and they haven't because we want to test the cotton states see if it's successful see what needs to be tweaked and then go mm-hmm. from there and um, Robert Charles he asked for it I mean yeah. Yeah, Robert Robert Charles has um, been having declining entries um, he's he's he is willing to do something mm-hmm. to step outside of the box mm-hmm. and try something new yeah uh, he's so then potentially what would be the, if, if all goes well and you get a positive result at the Cotton Stakes, what would be the next show that looks to, um, that, that would be looking to perhaps try this? Well, that's going to be up to the EC and okay. the, the officials at, at the NCHA. Um, I know that there's a lot of fall shows that would like to do it, um, and even some shows like the BI. I know Bob O'Bannon has been very supportive of this proposal. There's very, there's things that he would like to incorporate into his show next May. Um, but uh, if if the EC um, wants to see it at other shows, they can give those show producers the approval um, and then we'll just go from there and I guess besides the numbers the other thing that will um, determine its success is feedback yeah exactly. A- absolutely and, and that's just it is that w- we want we want to get the constructive criticisms and on how this thing needs to be tweaked and and just see you know I, I do I want to talk to the competitors at the cotton states and see how they like showing under this format if it makes sense for them if it makes sense for the horse 
you know, if it makes sense for the show producer. Um, it'll, it's going to be interesting. And talking about the horse, um, not only is it going to give a place to horses that you, as you were referring to earlier, just mm-hmm. are in the barn, um, it'll also help market them and give them value that they haven't necessarily been getting because they've had to go to other disciplines. That's correct. That's correct. We're hoping that that will incentivize um, owners maybe to, um, you know, hopefully for the futurity and these other, you know, smaller aged events to to enter and to continue to do so with horses that aren't maybe at that top level but that are you know competitive just you know on their best day they're they're going to mark a 16 and you know you come to a major here and Casey Green is exactly right you know I have horses that can mark 16s all day but I need a horse that can mark an 18 if I'm going to compete against this level here so he you know he he has been extremely helpful um as far as as a trainer's approach to this um denise and i both are non-pros and i mean the the amateur parts of it have been you know extremely helpful with you know um the the revolving door and how that works and you know the the caps and trying to make it as fair as possible for not just a certain group but for the masses and that has been our goal that was on our whiteboard when we first started it was the best horse gets the most money and then we wanted to Denise, keep it simple because it was so complicated. I mean, all these different, you know, different exceptions for this and that and the other. We wanted, it, like you said, we wanted to create a level that your, your skill level is at regardless of your age and that you can compete at that level. So, you know, uh, that was probably our, our main keep and keep it simple. Yeah, definitely keep it simple. Yes, yes. As simple as as you can because there's too many exceptions to the exceptions to the exceptions right now. And we were talking earlier, it's not something, you you can never find a solution that will please every single person, but there's got to be a compromise. It's the masses. That's that's what this is all about is is it's not I, it's about we. You know, we we have What's to for for, yes, exactly. And that that was that was our approach. Um, it's there's been a lot of time and effort, but a lot of facts have been found. Um, when we first started, we didn't realize that the weekends were the were the ones that were in trouble. The shows and the weekend. I mean, there's some regions and there's some affiliates that are are flourishing, but there are some of them that are in serious trouble. And these numbers that we're finding and trying to find a solution, the aged event was easier to fix because of the 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 ages of the horse. You know, the three year olds or the four year olds or five and six year olds, but not so much the novice horses or the you know the the 2000 limited rider or those and some some areas they don't exist some areas they flourish so it that is another animal and they are totally two different animals so we are so that's still a work in progress oh yes oh yes oh yes and and what about the challenger series have you seen any change there with the with the weekend events have not have not. I am not that familiar with the Challenger. Okay. I know that there are some regions and some affiliates that love them, and then there's some that they can't even get an entry. I know in our area in Florida, um, we we have not been great. It has not been something that has been. But we are flourishing. Our our little affiliate is very strong. But there are you know up in you know our east side of the coast Mm -hmm. is but there are some right here in texas that are struggling really struggling so it it, that's the complexity of trying to fix all of it with one rule you've got to take all of the pieces of the puzzle and it's difficult okay and finally you've set up here at the summer spectacular get the word out explain the rules and um, get people encouraged to go to the cotton stakes what has the feedback and response been like just here from people great so far we just we just came in this morning Um, Denise flew in and um, we have um, met with several trainers 
um, already addressed two two situations that they needed to know. You know, can the same horse you know show in the top? open division and in the intermediate with another rider and yes they can they're willing to pay those two entry fees yes they can you know how would you you know just just specifics that we needed to to address and we've done um it's it's i think people like to know that i can talk to somebody and i can get an answer back and if i don't know that answer i'll find you that answer i'm not going to just pick it out of thin air i'm going to find you the answer yeah. Well, great work, ladies. I mean, four years in the making. Yeah. It's about to come to fruition at the Cotton we'll Stakes. See, we'll see. So, yeah. Yeah. so best of luck with that, yeah, and thank, thank you, you for all your hard work. Thank you. You bet. Thank you.